Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. I am at Too Many Games outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It has been an awesome weekend so far. Checked out the Rocky Steps, uh, checked out uh, some of the sites in Philadelphia. But now it's game on, as in Too Many Games. Let's go inside and take a look. There's a lot of incredibly cool stuff in there. Lots of rare, common, and everything in between games. A lot of Video game merchandise, let's go check it out. Starting at the merch table, where they brought back some shirts from previous events, and they've got some new designs as well, of course. A lot of neat hat pins. That's where I put these kind of pins anyway. There's the new shirt, very cool. Very Sega friendly. Love the Miss Pac-Man design. There are a ton of booths at Too Many Games, including Pass the Controller podcast with my good buddy Brian Lessick. Check out this podcast. Very entertaining. If you love video games, you definitely want to check it out. Brian's been a great guy, has contributed numerous stories and essays for my video game books. Pretty freaking awesome. Great dude. That's some Japanese Nintendo 64. Very nice. GameCube as well. We're at Import Central. How's it going? Sure. How you doing? Doing well. Thank you. Is this your, uh, you done this show before? No, it's my second time I've ever worked. Oh, really? Well, this is a great show. I've done this one once before, I've and you were. here a few times. But oh, okay. I've never Okay, well you're gonna make a you're gonna do great. You I got a lot so. of great stuff, and uh, man, it's an awesome show. Hell yeah! Good luck. Thank you. What's up, guys? Ooh, <laughs> some really tasty issues of early Nintendo Power. A lot of trading cards at this show and board games as well. Magic: The Gathering is big here. Cartridges galore, mega booth. Let's look inside. This one promises to be epic. And right off the bat, you've got boxed rarities galore. Pretty awesome. And some graded games. I am here working with Heritage Auctions today. We have graded games at our booth, of course. So we will check those out in a little while. 7800, I remember when you could get these 7800 games, gosh, for just a buck or two a piece through mail order, through Best Electronics. They've gone up a little, you know. Most 7800 games won't cost you an arm and a leg, but they're not a buck or two anymore. Board game collecting is fun with I still need Qbert for my video board game collection. And that one's 35 bucks, not bad, not bad. I did too many games back in, uh, I believe it was 2017 maybe. I had a booth here with Leonard Herman. We were guests at the show and did a really fun panel. I am the Eggman. I am the Walrus, Cuckoo Cachoo. Beatles fans will get the reference. And if you just want to fill in holes in your collection with, you know, relatively common stuff, this is a great show, a lot of card only games. Forgotten Freshness Classic Gaming. More tasty imports. Ooh, I'd always like to see the Jaguar stuff. I'm still looking for Breakout 2000. I 
I still like to see the old uh, peripherals for the modern systems. Pretty cool. Kind of a throwback. Ooh, always great to see Dreamcast. I still need Kiss, the Kiss game on the Dreamcast. Psycho Circus, I believe. Not seeing it. There's sort of a pulled back look at the venue. But let's continue on down the aisle. Hey, good. That's some very nice uh, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color stuff here. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was there. Were you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a great show. Not Trap. Sega CD. Notorious game. Ooh, I love the gold Wiimote. Ooh, that's the most GameCube games I've seen in one place in a, in a while. Oh, wow. Been selling a complete set. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, nice. Very hard to find. We are right outside of Washington, D.C. Okay, cool. Dice City Games. Check them out on Facebook. Let's see what we got here for the Genesis. Definitely some hard to find titles. I always like the box art for this bad boy. Sucker for horror games, whether they're good or bad. Ooh, Philios, great shooter, getting very hard to find. Luckily, I got mine back at Funko Land back in the day. I know a lot of people still looking for Hyperstone Heist. Gunstar Heroes, many of you know I got mine for $2.99 back at Funko Land in the late 90s. Very lucky, held on to my copy. This shelving reminds me of the old days at GameStop when they still had PlayStation up until a few years ago and Dreamcast. Definitely brings back those days. It's too bad GameStop by and large doesn't sell retro games, although they do. They have solicited recently that they are accepting certain retro titles for certain systems. We'll see how that goes. Hasn't gone well in the past, uh, recent history. I still think if GameStop would get serious about retro games with their buying power and with their just absorption rate into video game retailing, they would kill it if they would hire some true experts on retro games and hire some people that could uh, you know, just run every game past a, an expert to make sure they aren't repros or whatever. They would kill it, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a simple book author. Just a writer of stuff. A lot of hustle and bustle. The show is getting ready to start soon. And you guys have that feeling of excitement right before the doors open. Ooh, nice little stack of Vectrex action there. Always a good thing. Hey, if you've been looking for the Sega Pico, if you're at too many games, you've come to the right place. Ooh, some very highly sought after Super Nintendo games. Great games. I spy some ColecoVision. Including some that are tough, kind of tough to find, like Campaign 84, that's kind of a toughie. Telly Turtle, a little bit obscure. And Frantic Freddy. Not bad, not bad. Ooh, these are tough. Robin Hood. Chuck Norris Super Kicks, a real early beat em up. Super Cross Force, I had to buy this game uh, to complete my classic home video games book to get a good write up for that. PlayStation long box games continue to steadily rise in price. 
It's a neat set to try to put together, although it is difficult. Thanks to games like Resident Evil and Tekken, they're getting pretty hard to find long box. Some beautiful Nintendo boxes there. I do miss this times when this stuff was worth pennies on the dollar and it was easier to collect, but hey, retro gaming is a popular hobby. $400 for Wacky Races. I remember seeing a CIB copy at Half Press Books for about 30 bucks a few years ago. Retro gaming is still affordable if you're cool with cart only, emulation, that kind of thing. But man, if you want to collect stuff in the box, you're definitely uh, looking at shelling out some cash. Been not resistance. Kind of a poor man's contra. Gotta love stack O boxed game systems, including in television, ooh, and the Odyssey voice. It lends voice to several games, makes them more fun. If a little bit, sometimes that voice can get a little bit uh, redundant. Your mileage may vary. Boy, this is the place to come if you want consoles, this table, including a Jag. Awesome. Nice turbo here. Got to shout out the Vectrex and these nice box copies. And two box sets, or three, Lethal Enforcers. One for Genesis, two for Sega CD. That's a really fun light gun shooter. For you Keith Apicary fans, it's just the Sega Justifier. And we've come to the Heritage Auctions booth where I'm working this weekend. Got a gorgeous booth, really big booth space with a lot of really primo games, some really high dollar stuff. Now, a lot of these games like Super Smash Brothers and Smash Brothers and Super Mario Brothers, the games themselves aren't necessarily rare, but it's these variants and these high graded variants, which what makes them so valuable. Nintendo Power, number one, they did print quite a few, but man, you're not going to find many 9.6s, and uh, that, that, that's where your value comes from. And the rare variants and the high grades, there's a 10A++ Pokemon Ruby version. Not going to see that every day. Water very rarely dishes out grades of 10, so pretty cool to see that. And look, Sierra Cataloger at Heritage Auctions, doing an awesome job. Get to work with her every day. That's a lot of fun. There she is again. <laughs> Poop Slinger, infamous PlayStation 4 game. Very rare. Fewer than 100 available. And Video Life. This is a throwback. Even back in the 90s, people knew that Video Life was a rare game for the 2600. X-Men, adult game. Pretty wild. And yes, Heritage lets me set my books up here, which is awesome. Very generous of them. Very cool. Let's see what else we have in the cases here. The Flash. Perfect timing with the movie in theaters. 9.6 A plus graded copy. That was the only video game based on the TV show released in the US. There was a Master System game, but uh, it was only released in Europe. See you guys in a bit. And tubs and tubs and tubs of greatness everywhere, including the Wii U. People are starting to take the Wii pretty serious from a collector standpoint. Um, you know, it was a disappointment in the marketplace. Vastly undersold the Wii, and obviously the Switch passed it way up very quickly. But uh, it's got some great games, and I like my Wii U, and do not plan on getting rid of it ever.
$250 for Joe and Mac. $130 for Spider-Man. Yes. Box games have definitely uh, gone up in recent years. There's, there's just no getting around it. And I know that's kind of a bummer for some collectors, but, you know, that's just how it goes with hobbies. You know, the, the marketplace comes and goes. Um, video games weren't necessarily considered collectible a few years ago, but it was sort of inevitable. Physical media that's popular like this, whether it's cards or comic books or base or game cards, like playable game cards or baseball cards. There was a time when those weren't considered collectibles. So it's very cyclical. Pop culture media, physical media, you can just pretty much guess at some point it is going to be valuable. Supply and demand, a lot of people are nostalgic for these games, especially nice boxed copies like these very secure table with everything behind glass don't blame them sadly things do walk off sometimes it shows it's an unfortunate underbelly of any collecting hobby there are some scumbags that uh, seem to think that uh, what's yours is theirs it's really sad but you know we do what we can to prevent that from happening and this booth is obviously doing a good job while still having things on display wow super turrican 2 that is one tough ombre to find five thousand dollars felix the cat has gained a lot of uh popularity in recent years people just realize what a great fun game it is sort of a super mario brothers type game I've got this very Dragon's Lair lunchbox. Well, not this one, but <laughs> one exactly like it on my desk at work. Ooh, the Mountain Dew Xbox. Limited edition, pretty cool. I love themed consoles. I've noticed there's something for just about every collecting range and price range at this show. Huge variety of consoles from Atari to the present. No, I haven't seen any Magnavox Odyssey or Fairchild Channel F, the pre-2600 console stuff yet, but there's been plenty of everything else, pretty much. Ooh, that's cool. TRS-80 color computer. Nice. I like anything that takes me back to the 80s and late 70s. Well, anything gaming related anyway. More graded games. Definitely seeing more of those these days. Mr. Do. I wonder what a box copy that goes for these days. I don't see the price on that one, but as you guys know, my favorite video game of all time. The old Extertainment. There was a uh, exercise bike created for the Super Nintendo that was compatible with a couple of games. Pretty wild. Again, just tubs and tubs and tubs of games, including for the Switch. The Switch this is just doing incredibly well in the marketplace, and we'll see if it passes up the PS2 at some point. If Nintendo delays a new console for a couple of years or so, who knows? It could pass up the PS2, but we shall see. If they would come out with a new Switch that's just sort of an upgraded Switch, that would continue being counted under switch numbers. Perhaps it would pass up the PS2, but I'm sure they're gonna be coming out with a all new console sooner rather than later. Always fun to see these old Coleco tabletops. Box. 
The next best thing to owning an arcade game back then. I remember when Toys R Us was discounting 32Xs for $9.99 each. Now box twins are command to premium like so much other retro gaming stuff. Ooh, a 3DO, that's cool. I got my 3DO at, for Toys R Us at, I mean, um, excuse me, a pawn shop, Thrift Town, actually a thrift store. Get your facts straight, Brett, at a thrift store. But they had it sort of in the VCR so, uh, shelves. They just had some VCRs and a 3DO randomly in there for $12. And I'm sure Thrift Town, this was years ago before retro gaming was really considered valuable. But I'm sure they didn't even know what they had. Just threw it in there with something that looked like a v you know, with the VCRs because it kind of vaguely resembled one. And it's a massive wall of more modern-ish stuff. Wii, Xbox, PS4, PS1 down below. Hard to believe the PS2 is 20 years old. That just kills me, or over 20 years old now. It's just hard to believe that uh, that much time has passed. If you've never been to too many games, it's definitely one of the better retro gaming shows. Up there with Portland, Midwest Gaming Classic, one of the bigger, better shows with just ridiculous amounts of inventory. You are not going to leave this show empty-handed. You will definitely find something for your collection, something fun to play. Some tasty NES games in there, including Chiller. Very hard to find in the box. Knuckles Chaotix, wow, that one's gotten really hard to find. Some great stuff. Cool World, terrible game and movie, but, you know, cartoon Kim Basinger can't go wrong. I'm a big fan of digging under tables and tubs. A lot of times you can find some good deals. Super Mario Little Golden Book. I might have to grab one of these. That is just too cool. My son got a Jaws one recently. Big time Jaws fan. Ooh, here's a tasty trio of Coleco stand-up games. Two Pac-Mans and a Miss Pac-Man. I won a Pac-Man back at the uh, Oklahoma Video Game Expo years ago in an Atari 2600 tournament. Pretty cool. And in that same contest, I won a Jaguar system. Crazy. And I mentioned, oh, whoa. Some very, oh, I would love to get a copy of Punisher for the NES box like that. That is just so awesome, but man. It is not cheap. Gorgeous stuff, guys. But speaking of PS2, I mentioned earlier, some common stuff, but you know, fill holes in your collection, that kind of thing. There are more tubs of games here than, gosh, just about any show I can think of. Tub after tub. Just a massive, massive show. Too many games, you might say. Love when they bring back uh, old IPs to modern consoles. Pretty cool. Check it out, guys. Two boxed Virtual Boys. I found mine at a thrift store for $9 years ago. And what was crazy, when I opened it up, there was like seven or eight games inside. 
card only, but that was a great score. Fester's Quest, always like the artwork on this box. Good old Adam's family, great stuff. Gives good box art, as they say. Here's an interesting booth, really slick, really gorgeous copies of these old consoles. Copies, is that the word you use when you're talking about systems and not games? I don't know, you tell me. But really clean systems, really nice, got some special editions here. You got some reshellings of, of consoles, Japanese exclusives, just gorgeous. Custom lighting. This is definitely for the specialty collector. Very cool. Nice stuff. That's just like my Game Boy Color, the purple. Always love that color. Nice rich color. Oops. Check out this incredibly rare Superman game. Never seen one of these in person, actually. Getting ready to wrap up things, guys, but I had to come over to these older systems. The Atari 5200 box is just so big, it's just crazy. But I love it, man. It just gives me the nostalgic feels. Takes me back to my teenage years, which is always, or at least usually, a good thing. Speaking of, I love my TI-99, just play the carts on it, Munchman and the like, it's Odyssey 2, speaking of Munch, Casey Munchman and Casey's Crazy Chase, two of my favorite games. Man, there is just a ridiculous amount of boxed NES, Super NES and N64 stuff at this show. Rad Racer 2, one of the few sequels that has fewer features than the original game in the series. Really strange. They took away the 3D and some other options. Oh, nice. You don't see that many box Sega CDs these days. The show has opened. It's starting to fill up. So pretty quick here, guys. I'm going to get over to my booth and get back to work there so let me know in the comments have you been to too many games before what was your experience what shows do you plan on attending this year what is your favorite retro gaming con i'm telling you too many games is one of my favorites it's absolutely awesome this is just the second time i've been like i mentioned earlier but it is amazing all right guys signing off we will talk to you in another video